everybody. This is Minty Lewis. Uh, you may recognize me as the voice of Eileen in regular show. Sounds just like this. So I'm not going to do another voice, so you'll recognize me. Anyway, you are listening to the Boys Podcast. Dude, she's coming this way. Hey, guys, here's your order. I triple dipped your sandwich, Rigby, just the way you like it. So, um, Rigby, I was wondering, do you like miniature golf? Me too. Uh, you know, in an ironic way. My shift ends early tonight. Want to go? Hey, Rigby, look at me. I just laid sea turtle eggs, and now I'm going to swim out to sea. Although many of my hatchlings won't live to adulthood. I think Eileen is hot without her glasses on! Hey, guys. Here's your coffee. And welcome back to our episode of The Boys Podcast. My guest today is a voice actress, storyboard artist, writer, and producer. You may have heard her voice as Eileen, a regular show, a show she also storyboarded and wrote episodes for, Miss Swaddles in The Toy's Life, Aaron in Adventure Time, Becky in Bob's Burgers, Kez in Affinity Train, and she's also one of the co-creators of the show The Great North. So welcome to the legend herself, Miss Minty Lewis. Welcome, Minty. Thank you, everyone. So happy to be here. Thank you, Minty. What have you been up to? How are you doing? How's Minty doing? I'm doing pretty well. Um, it's raining here in Southern California right now, so that is a little bit different for all of us to experience, but um, welcome and lovely. And did you mean work-wise and not weather-wise? You could do both. You could do both. <laughs> Okay, so work-wise, I am developing a few different shows, and they're in various stages of development and with various people and other producers and attachments, but none of them are in a place where I can really go into too much detail, but it's all, I've got a lot of, a lot of pots on the stove. Is that how it goes? Irons in the fire? That's what it is. Yeah. So you're like, you're busy, 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 basically? No, I'm not actually busy, busy, busy. I mean, it, when I put it all on paper, it's a lot of different things to think about and look at. But day to day, it's kind of like I do a little bit on this and a little bit on that and talk to this person. But it's not it's not a chock full schedule at the moment, which is actually really nice. I'm not someone who loves to work hard all the time, mm -hmm. to be quite honest. Yeah, for us, like if you're curious for the weather here, <clears throat> it's like very cold. Because we're in Chicago. Was it snowing or was it snowing? It was snowing a couple days ago, I want to say, I think. A couple days ago. Okay. So no yeah. hints of spring, no, no no daffodils poking up out of the ground just yet nope. there. Not yet. I'm sorry it's to too, hear that. It's so cold here, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> now, what made you want to become a voice actress, storyboard artist, and writer? And who would you say is your, your biggest inspiration? For um Hmm. Okay, well, I'll answer the first what made me want to do it, which was that I didn't know that that was really possible for me. So I don't think that I ever intentionally set out to do to work in animation or to be a voice actor. I mean, if you had told me that was what I was going to be doing when I grew up, I don't think that I would have believed it. Um, so I got the way I got started in animation was I was making comics um, just like photocopied at the copy store and going to like small press convention types of things. And then JG Quintel who created regular show saw my comics and asked me to take a storyboarding test, which I didn't know what that was at all at the time, but I was like, of course, yes, I would love to have mm -hmm. such an opportunity. And um, I got the job. So like, I got the job and then once I was doing the job, that's when I realized that this is actually very much what I would like to be doing. And I just didn't know that that was, I mean, I knew obviously that people got paid to do that, but it seemed like a, a different person from the person that I was. Um, and then the voice acting happened after I was hired on regular show as a storyboarder and writer. And the way that we would go through pitches, um, was just like to do the voices for every character and be like, you know, here Eileen comes in with a pot of coffee or whatever and says, hi Rigby, 
so like that type of thing. But I mean, you would do it for every character as you were pitching. And then um, one of the first episodes I pitched had Eileen in it and they just really liked the way that I did her voice and asked me if I would be willing to do her voice. And I was like, of course, yes, sure, definitely. Um, so, I mean, a lot of a lot of lucky things that came my way without me being very intentional about it is, is how I will sum it up. And so because of that, I don't know that I can point to anyone who is like a big influence, except that there are obviously some cartoons that I have really been a huge fan of. Um, Beavis and Butthead and The Simpsons and, and things like that are sort of my inspiration points always. King of the Hill. When you, when you said hi, Reapy, I was like, oh, you know, because your voice does sound, sound like a lean, but you said it. Right? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I mean, one of the nice things about regular show is that a lot of the voice actors, not, I mean, some of them are very talented and have a great deal of range, like Roger and Bill also. Um, but like JG's Mordecai voice is just JG's speaking voice. And Eileen is obviously my speaking voice. And anytime they tried to have me do, um, another character on the show. It just sounded like Eileen pretending to be another character on the show. I don't really have a lot of range, so it's just worked out really well that I get to do my normal speaking voice for these characters. It's it's cool too. Like Sam Marin could do Muscle Man pops. Those oh, yeah. are and then Benson his normal. It sounds like normal his normal voice, but yeah. pops Muscle Man. Wow. Did you say you had spoken to Sam? Yeah, I've spoken to Sam. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean Sam is amazing. It's amazing to. It, it was amazing uh, to see him go through like a page of dialogue, which has him doing every single voice on the page and be able to do that as a conversation. I mean, yeah, he could, he could do it. And it was very impressive. That would like kill my vocal cords. Like no way. <laughs> like, you know? I think he gave it his all and I didn't, yeah, I don't think I even realized that killing your vocal cords was a possibility, except there were a few episodes where Eileen had to really scream. And then I would realize after that, that that was something you needed to look after because the real professionals will like have throat lozenges and, you know, honey tea and things like that to take care of their vo voices. But it was a part of my lifestyle. Now, what is your favorite voice actor we've done? You've done Adventure Time, Bob's Birds, you know, Eileen, of course. You're, you're, you're. I mean, I've got to say Eileen just because I feel so connected to her. Um, because, I mean, so many more, so much, so many more episodes, so much more time doing that voice and then writing for her and storyboarding for her. So, um, and then I feel like she's just been in a lot of different situations. So, yeah, it's it was I learned a lot as Eileen and really got to practice that and um yeah, just a lot of fun. And then the voice on Adventure Time was really fun. I feel like I can listen back actually and hear how I was not I'm not saying that I'm a great voice actor now, but or like a skilled actress, uh, but I can hear how like I got better at emoting and doing things through voice acting. And that happened, I think, pretty on in my voice acting life. And it, to me, it sounds a little bit like reading from the page. <laughs> but um, nonetheless, that was really a cool experience just because uh, the creator, the writer and animator of that episode specifically was so interesting. That's so that's that's awesome. Like honestly, like you're, you're very talented, Minty. Like honestly, like wow. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're very welcome. Like, and if you want to mind, could you like some do, do some like Eileen quotes? Like, can you like say like some, like you said, hi rugby was that was cool. Sorry. Hi rugby. Um, shoot, what's my sea the sea turtle one? I think actually the sea turtle line. Many of my hatchlings won't live to adulthood. Uh I think that is kind of what got me the job because that was the episode that I pitched that went over so well. And then they were like, you got to be the voice of Eileen. Um, so, yeah. What else? She does some screaming. Can I get you anything else? Et cetera. I, <laughs> I mean, it's say any lines you have in mind. It's like, it's so cool too. Like she, like in my opinion, she helped Rigby grow because like Rigby at first, I mean, like 
he like didn't want to talk to her like he was weirded by her like you know what i mean then he eventually like, you know what i mean like yeah yeah no she did she did and um it was interesting to watch over my son's shoulder i mean this was a, only like a month or two ago that he was really into regular show and watched like from the very first episode to the very last episode mm-hmm. and rapid time so i was like oh like the ep- things really did change from the beginning to the end i don't think i had gone back and done a full review of the show since it had ended but um it goes to a lot of interesting places and there is character growth and other things that you don't normally think of and associate with kids cartoons heck you and rigby even got married and had kids we got married and had kids oh my god i know <laughs> Like wow, awesome. I know. No, to keep following their journey, but I suppose everything must end eventually. Uh-huh. Now, I think you kind of hinted at it earlier. Like, how did you get like the like how do you get to work on the set of regular show? Like, how did you get the role? Like the audition process, like all that. Like for Eileen, like I think you kind of hinted at it earlier, but I mean, it wasn't an audition process, and that's kind of how I've gotten every voice act. I've never done an audition. Um, because it's just been friends of mine who have asked me to come in and do things. Cause when you do, when you solicit auditions, you'll get like a hundred and most of them are pretty good and like will work. So, um, I mean, and I've also mostly done smaller parts where it wasn't really a pivotal role either. So like, you don't necessarily need like the exact perfect sound for somebody who's just like walking through a movie theater or whatever, you know? Um, Mm. But yeah, so I've never auditioned. It's just been people I know who like me, like think the sound of my voice is right, asking me to do something. Wow, that's really cool. Like, that's so cool. Like, honestly, like you work so much, like so many cool worlds and you've done so many cool things like the storyboarding, the writing, the voice acting, it's like, wow. Yeah, I've been very lucky to have, have the right things come my way. It's really cool. Now, favorite regular show character other than Eileen? Do you have a favorite? Um, you know who I love is Rigby's brother Don. That was an early episode, but uh there was a a drawing of Don hanging in somebody's office where just my eyes would always linger and I just thought he was such a funny character. And I think Ken Marino voiced Don, right? Yep. Um and I think he's such a funny actor too and brings so much to every character that he does so i mean he's not he's not always i think he's only in that episode but uh he was very funny everybody else i probably sounds like i take them for granted just because i would see them all so often but i love rigby as well obviously i married him and i had children with him so yes um yeah and muscle man was always really fun to write for too um he he especially was making me laugh a lot when I was watching over my son's shoulder. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Now, would you be willing to come back and voice Eileen again if, like, they asked you like, for a comeback movie? Comeback. Of would course. You... Yes, absolutely. Like, if, if regular show guy now it's coming back, like, you'd be. Why honest. wouldn't I? <laughs> that'd be that'd be awesome. Like, the, the, be awesome. Just... yeah. You guys should come back, like get the whole cast back to there, you know? I love I that. I mean, when you get JG in here, do the hard sell. I think it's up to JG. I don't think the rest of us can make that call. And then I don't know what's happening with Cartoon Network. A lot of things have changed over there too. But um, it does seem like there are there are still fans. Oh, so. yeah. Now, before I ask you my next question, my next question, actually, I had a special guest. Like They sent me a video question for you. It'll be, it'll be really cool for you. Oh, okay. Any any guesses who the special guest is? I guess. Special guest. Is it someone from regular show? That that would give it away though, I think. I think that would give it away. Okay. Yeah, no guesses. Okay. It's loading my phone. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about the minty. It is. Oh, it's Bill. There okay. he is. Hi, Minty. Bill Salyers here. I hope you're doing great. Long time no see. So Joe was kind enough to let me ask you a question during your interview. And I came up with uh, at least one. So my question is, are, um, obviously you were a great writer and then you proved to be a great voice actor. 
So which did you find more challenging? Which do you enjoy more? And bonus points, would you be willing and or interested in recording more VO for different characters? Thanks. I'll take my answer off the air. I'm wow. Yeah. Great question, Bill. Thank you so much for piping up. Um, now, I don't remember any of the questions he asked. Oh, okay. Which was more challenging, writing or voice acting? Yes. Was that the first part of it? Yes. Or which did I enjoy more? Um, I enjoyed them equally. I will say that voice acting was easier for me um, just I think because I don't know enough about it to know how well or poorly I'm doing it. So it was just kind of like a really fun way to bring the characters to life with people I really enjoyed. And it just felt like playing around anytime I was doing voice recording. Additionally, it was um, like my family is much more impressed by my voice acting than by my writing. I mean, you can like point to that and be like, see, I did that. And it, they recognize it as my voice and it makes a lot more sense that that is an accomplishment that is tangible. And when you say I wrote this episode, uh, it means a lot less to them and people are much less impressed by that. Not that I'm only doing things to impress people, but uh, yeah. And then, but I will say also that the writing ultimately I think feels more satisfying personally, just because that was um, a muscle that I had to work a little bit more and like felt, I mean, more challenging, but challenging in a good way where mm. it felt harder to get it right or to where I wanted it to be always. So that was the first part, right? What was his second question? something was like one of them was like would you do want to do more voiceover roles basically oh of course absolutely yes why wouldn't i <laughs> yeah because what's called if for the viewers at home you know you know, bill salyers is the voice of rigby for the viewers at home they want to know right yes <laughs> yeah he does a lot he does a lot he's been very busy as far as i know i think he does a lot of video game voices and then yep. i'll often hear him pop up here and there he was in close enough at least mm. one episode of close enough yeah he was dog boy i think if I remember. right dog boy <laughs> yeah he's really cool bill like honestly he's like oh my god you're gonna be even minty i got you you get you so bill's great yes he's, he's, he's brought... oh sorry about that you're saying that? oh i was just saying he always brought a lot of enthusiasm to the role of rigby and and i feel like we were really lucky that everyone Everyone on the cast had a lot of gratitude and just uh, a positive gratitude and a positive attitude, I would say. I mean, you and you and Rigby, like Eileen and Rigby, the dynamic duo. You know, honestly. I mean, who knew it would last as long as it did? Awesome. That's really cool. Now, who now over the years of career, who like, do you still keep in touch with co-stars and directors you work with? So, um. I mean, I will keep in touch in terms of like on Instagram, I will like their photos and stuff, but uh, I don't really hang out with anyone from the cast because like in the grand scheme of things, the way the records worked, um, it would be four hours for me. I was in maybe every third episode, so that would be like <clears throat> every three weeks. And then meanwhile... I'm working full time in the office with all of the other storyboarders and writers and everybody that worked on the production of the show. So that was really where most of my social relationships came from was like going to lunch every day with all the other board artists. And with them, I am still friends and we keep in touch. And actually a bunch of us are going and getting lunch tomorrow. So yeah. Yeah. Who would you say is the coolest person that you have worked with in your whole career? Who's that the coolest person I've ever worked with? Yes. I can't narrow it down to just one. I mean, I think what happens the more you work with cool people is that you learn that the people that you thought were the absolute coolest maybe are less cool than you imagine them to be. And then the people that are, I mean, I'm not, yeah, actually that's true. Um, and then 
you find the coolness in the people that you didn't know would have it. I mean, I think ultimately everyone is equally cool. You just have to find it. Any cool Mark Hamill stories? Because I know Roger Craig Smith, he told me a cool story. Do you have any cool Mark Hamill? Uh, I actually didn't interact with him all that often because the way that he would record would be to come in and then do like 10 episodes at once. So he wasn't there at the weekly um, recordings. Um, I don't really have a story he did. I'm honored that he remembered my name. I think he called me Misty for a while, but I will take that. I accept that and I am honored by it. Yeah. So your new name's Misty Lou. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. That's really cool. Now, if you were a if you were a voice actress, story artist, and writer, what do you think you would have done as a career and what other like instead, what other interests and hobbies do you have uh, you know, I had I had a career before this happened because I didn't get the job on regular show until I was 32, I think, is when I started doing that. So um, I worked as a graphic designer before that, which, um, I mean, it was like, you know, good enough. <laughs> I worked for a company called Viz, um, in San Francisco and they did a lot of, I mean, they did exclusively manga and so, and Shonen Jump magazine. Do you know that? Oh, after, after was, Shonen. Okay. So I was, a. I was a graphic designer for Shonen Jump magazine and Shoujo Beat magazine. So that was my life before. So like sort of like adjacent um, to what I'm doing now, but wow. not the same. Do you have any like interest in, interest in hobbies? Like do you draw? Or do you like ride a bike? I don't know if you have any hobbies. Do not ride a bike. Um, <laughs> I know how to ride a bike. I do not ride a bike because I get scared of cars and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. but, and I don't really like to draw either. Lately, I've been starting to paint more and do a bit more of that, which is something that I've never really explored before. Um, I like to do aerobics is my fitness and yoga. Um, I like more like self-directed, no threat of cars hitting you exercise and I don't know, stuff like that. So, so you have fear of car, I don't, is that even a thing, fear of cars? <laughs> yeah, fear of cars. Uh, I guess it must be a thing. I don't know. What, I don't like have Maybe. it walking down the street, but I don't like being on a bike. Maybe in LA specifically, but I am not mm. a confident bike rider in traffic. If it was like, actually, I don't enjoy riding a bike at all. It doesn't feel comfortable to me. I do not stop trying to make me ride a bike. It is not <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> now, favorite band or artist and type of music? What kind of music do you like, Mindy? <sighs> what kind of music? Hmm. I mean, I feel like I don't know very much new music, but I am often going back to things that I liked when I was like in my early 20s and teens, um, which I guess was like pavement I'll put on in excess I put on yesterday. I don't know. I'm not particularly driven to put music on. I would say, but I like a lot of, I like a lot of stuff. I don't know. That's not a good answer, is it? REM. The things I was really into in high school was REM and U2. And uh, I haven't really, like, Tears for Fears is the concert I went to last year. Was that Those old ones, they're, they're coming back up. What's that? No, I said, was that a good concert? I Because believe it or not, Minty, I love 80s music. So was that a good concert? Oh, Tears really? Yeah, it really, was, it really was. They still really got it and they really bring it. And they played, I was concerned at first because they were playing a lot of things from their new album at the beginning. Mm. And that one I was not quite as familiar with. Although it does have some good songs, mm. I will say. Um, but then they got into all the classics of which there are so many. So yeah, yeah and they were all great. I had terrible seats. I had thought that it wouldn't be packed and that I could move to better seats with my friends, but um, it was a sold out show. So we were like genuinely in the nosebleed area where like the 
slope or incline was like very vertical. So we were like way up here. <laughs> it was uncomfortable from a sensory experience, uh, but good music. See, like, like uh, this is why I think they they don't, they don't make the music the same like they did back in the day. Like the back in the day is way better than that. nowadays. Is yeah. yeah. My, what do you like to listen to? I love 80, 80s rock. Like I'm a big Queen fan. They're seventies, eighties, and nineties. I'm Queen. Mm -hmm. I like Queen. I like Def Leppard. I like Poison. The Cars. You know, the cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Cars are great. I will. I'll put the Cars on sometimes. Like, honestly, like, and then Wild Show like had a great soundtrack too. Like, honestly, too. Like, oh my god. Yeah, I was thinking of that. It makes sense that you like the '80s and you like Regular Show. I mean, the two go hand in hand. Yeah, it's like like a match made in heaven. You <laughs> like very like, much so. I also like the Cure. I don't feel like mm -hmm. the Cure. Like, they're still rocking. I was just hearing that they're coming to the Hollywood Bowl this summer. Oh yeah, and I then think you know, my daughter's getting into the Cure. Like at twelve, she doesn't talk to me about it, but when I snoop on her Spotify, I see that there's some Cure happening in there. Ooh, and then I also like you know Sticks, you know, you know the band Sticks. Mm -hmm. Like the, the mm -hmm. list could go on. Like because I, I actually, but, but yeah, I, I love like like eighties music. Like like I said, like no, nowadays I can't like make the same music. Yeah, you know I mean, Minty, like. Mm -hmm. I do know what you mean. Although there's some, I hear some things on the radio and I'm like, this is a new song, but it sounds like an old song. So what's going on? What's going so on? Maybe like, they try, I don't know. Yeah, they try to sound like back in the day, trying to get the hints. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you mentioned Tears for Fears, like that's another great band. Like they, like you said, the hits could go on and I like, I wouldn't mind seeing them in concert. Was that a good concert at least? Like was it? Was yeah, it, it was a great concert. Yes, it was, it was a little bit, uh, I don't know. It was it was a lot just because I haven't been to a concert in a while. Like how you have to, you can't bring any bags in is a thing I didn't think about, and all the all the rules that go into an in person event. Um, but yeah, they can play still for sure. That's awesome. Uh, now, favorite movies and TV shows. You like favorite movies and TV shows? Okay. Um, I mean. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is a classic mm -hmm. favorite that I will always love. Um, and then TV shows, I mean, King of the Hill. Mm -hmm. There's a show, Mike White, who did White Lotus before that did Enlightened, which I really, really love. Um, I don't tend to watch a lot of cartoons, um, like the ones that I do pay attention to and watch, I really, really enjoy, but for the most part, there aren't that many of them. Ten-year-old Tom is a recent cartoon that I've really enjoyed. Um, I'm blanking on everything that I've ever really liked, but that's a few, right? Did you like the, Did you like the TV shows New Girl or Parks and Rec? Did you ever see any of those before? Mentioned? I did. Yeah, I wasn't like a diehard, but I can appreciate that they had fun characters and good jokes and timing and all of that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. How, how about like movies wise? What kind of movies do you like? Um, like what have I, I really enjoyed Marcel the Shell with Shoes on this year. Ooh. I thought that was very beautiful and like one, a kid's movie that I could take my kids to that doesn't feel in your face, as they say, like I would just really appreciate the the calmer energy and like the quieter storyline that was in Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, and I feel like that's really lacking in a lot of kids' movies. Um, and oh, you know what? A cartoon that I really enjoyed, which is what my son is is hooked on right now, is Gumball. Oh, uh, Adventures of Gumball. Adventures. Yeah. It's very, very funny. Um, I'm trying to think, like, what movies have I loved? Muriel's Wedding is one that I have really... These are, like, some old school ones. I can't think of any from the past few years. Oh, Magic Mike XXL, obviously. So you like Channing Tatum, you're saying? You're saying. I do, yes. Let it be known. <laughs> see, see, my favorite movies, I'm a big 80s movies fan, like Back to the Future, Breakfast Club. 
16 mm-hmm. cans of whiskey. Yes. Up, yes. I, that was a huge part of my growing up was like the breakfast club, pretty in pink, 16 candles, yeah. all of the Molly Ringwald of was, was very formative for me for sure. So like all the John Hughes like films are basically when he made me know his films. Yeah, I guess so. It is all the John Hughes ones, but the the female perspective specifically. Yeah. Like I mean, I love Ferris Bueller, but I don't. It didn't like click for me in the same way as the ones. Yeah. Molly Ringwald was in. So if I interviewed Molly Ring- Ring- Ringwald, you'd go crazy. You'd be like, oh my god. I might go crazy. <laughs> I just might. I mean, like, I love, like, because my mom calls me, like, an old soul, because I love, like, 80s stuff, like, movies, uh-huh. movies music, like, the list could go on, Matila, you're probably like, what? <laughs> like, oh. yeah. Well, I mean, they last for a reason, because a lot of yeah. them are good, a lot of them are problematic as well, but, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot in there to, to honor and to look at just from like an art history perspective and see them as crystallizations of culture at the time and like harbingers of what's to come, et cetera. Yeah. Wow. Now, favorites, do you like sports, favorite sports and teams at all? Do you like sports with you? Um, Sorry about that, Angie. No, not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna have a lot to offer you there. I'm not a sports person. My first instinct is to say the Washington Redskins, which are not even the Washington Redskins anymore. They're Washington <laughs> football team, right? Commanders. Because I am from the DC area, but mm. I don't pay attention to any. The, the 1992, no wait, 1996 Olympic dream team. Mm. That's all I've got for you. Yeah. <clears throat> excellent marketing. Yeah, see, I like football and hockey. Like, for, for, I like football, hockey. Like, uh, mainly hockey, though, because I don't know. It's like a fast pace. You know I mean? Do you play sports? Mm-mm. 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 Watch and enjoy. Yes. I'm too, I'm too small for sports. <laughs> too small. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Well, then I'm you a- could do – aren't there, like – yeah, then you can do other stuff like running or non-team based sports. Maybe. Oh, does not oh, does not be there with my I have asthma too. You know, asthma. Oh, okay. So maybe yeah. yoga. That's not really a sport, is it? Just doing something something with your body doesn't make it count as a sport. The, prof- the professional yoga league, the PYL. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> now, favorite food. What's your favorite food, Minty? I am a vegetarian, so it's not meat. Um, I really do like like pastas and breads and stuff, which I know is not healthy, but it just tastes so good. I love like a fresh loaf of bread. Ooh, okay. Wow. So, um, do you want to meet my cat? She's coming into the. What you got? This is what I've got. This is Miss Winnie. It's Winnie. Check it out. What, what's your cat's name? What's her your... name is Miss Winnie because Miss Winnie. we got her and her sister during the pandemic um, when my sons, uh, when their schools closed and she's named after my son's favorite preschool teacher who he didn't get to finish the year with. So we got a cat named Miss Winnie instead. Miss Winnie. Miss Winnie. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. And the other one is tiny. Ti- so not, Miss Winnie and Tiny. Yeah, not a preschool teacher. <laughs> yeah, just Miss Tiny. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is is Tiny not Tiny or is Tiny Tiny? Is- Tiny's story is that she so they were in a litter together at the rescue place that we got them from, but the vet thought that Tiny seemed a month younger than all the other kittens. So she was smaller and we don't know what her story is exactly. Um, so she was tiny or at that time. Now she's a normal sized cat. Now she's normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. Now, now, are there any projects you have in the works and they come up in the works? For I do have a few projects in the works. Nothing that, that is green lit or that is ready to be talked about, but I've got, maybe five shows in nascent stages of development. I don't think 
all of them will go forward, but this is this is how the game is played and and how the cheddar is made. Yes. And hopefully Rego Show will be back. Right? Be and hopefully cool. regular show will be back. I mean, yes. Let's put it on the vision board. Yeah, because imagine that like after Sunday, like the day later. Oh, breaking news, right? I was like, what? <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> that'd be really cool. Now, what advice would you give younger people who want to become a voice actress, a storyboard artist, writer? Like, what's your advice? Would you, would you... Um, I think my advice would be to, I don't think there's a linear path to any of those careers being successful, but if you are interested in voice acting and animating and writing, directing, I would say just start doing it and start doing it in a way that makes it available to other people to see what you're doing. So like, I mean, my way of doing that was doing comics and having those available and not just like holding up with them and like trying to get good at a, get perfect at a craft before sharing it with other people. I think like start making things and start sharing things before you feel like you're ready to do that. And that will... Yeah. Wow. I always like to like, stay humble. Remember you came from. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely that too. Because yeah, I don't get like why people like, like oh like oh my gosh I'm like this big voice actor like or something. I mean like you know what I mean Minty like I don't get people. Mhm. Mm yeah. I mean everybody. Everybody is the same at the end of the day. Yeah. Now, would you be willing to come back on for part two, answer some fan submitted questions? Uh, I guess so. Sure. Eileen fan asks, like, I don't know, something like, like I could like have like fans submit questions. For oh, okay. Of. Sure. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Now, is there anything you'd like to promote? Shall I, like I'll link down below for the video description. Like, do you want me to promote like any, like maybe regular show people check out? Do you want me to do anything? I don't know. I don't think I need to promote anything specifically. I'm just going to trust that the universe will bring things to people as they need it as the universe needs to but i hope they'll check out regular show if they want to but i can't force that upon anyone yes <laughs> well thank you and minty for being an awesome amazing guest i had a fun time chatting with you thank you minty yes thank you so much this has been so fun thank you have a great day everybody and stay awesome and you stay awesome minty thank you you stay awesome too <laughs>